How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for pharmacology and family medicine for step one and step two. I've actually made a similar question to this uh, on my audio cue bank already, but the focus is high yieldness. Okay, so cut to the chase, not waste your fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 49 year old woman, she is flying on an airplane tomorrow and she has history of motion sickness slash is concerned about motion sickness. And we are going to prescribe a drug here. And so that's all this question is, okay? Uh, so how do we treat motion sickness? Uh, I'll give you some high yield factoids you need to know. We could obviously make this a 44 minute discussion about every fucking mechanism of action, all the drugs, all their side effects, all their use cases, okay? I'm gonna keep this clip consolidated as I just fucking said. So. Should I say alpha one agonism? Wrong fucking answer. Uh, for US Simili, you need to know that this refers to phenylephrine hydrochloride, okay, phenylephrine, as well as oxymetazoline. Those are the two highest yield agents. You need to know that alpha one agonism intranasally relieves nasal congestion, okay? That's the highest yield factoid. As I said, we could make a lengthy discussion about everything here. You should also know that alpha-1 agonism on arterials will cause an increase in blood pressure and reflex bradycardia. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, alpha-1 antagonism, wrong answer. So phenoxybenzamine, a reversible alpha-1 blocker used for pheochromocytoma. You could know that phentolamine, tamsulosin, terazosin, okay, the latter two in particular, tamsulosin, terazosin, uh, those can be used as treatment for BPH. So alpha-1 antagonism will decrease blood pressure. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see alpha-2 agonism? Wrong answer. Were alpha-2 in general for Yosemite not that high yield? You could be aware of clonidine and methyl dopa or alpha-2 agonists. Methyl dopa can be used uh, for hypertension during pregnancy. Clonidine is a psych drug, okay, with various uh, uses. Uh, it can be used for Tourette as well. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, alpha-2 antagonism, wrong answer. This could refer to a drug called mirtazapine, which is used for patients who have depression and anorexia. It stimulates appetite, okay? So low BMI uh, plus depression, uh, mirtazapine, an alpha-2 antagonist, uh, is an effective med. Choice E, beta-1 antagonist, wrong answer. So beta blocker, okay? Obviously lengthy discussion. Uh, metoprolol is a beta-1 selective antagonist that could be used for atrial fibrillation. Uh, beta blocker is obviously used for heart failure, okay? Not for motion sickness, wrong fucking answer. Choice F, M3 agon agonism, wrong answer. So for you assimily, you need to know of a drug, uh, bethanicol, which stimulates the detrusor muscle. Uh, so it's an M3 agonist that's used for overflow incontinence in diabetes, okay? Carbacol is an M3 agonist as well as pilocarpine. Uh, both of those can be used for the treatment of glaucoma, okay? Wrong fucking answer. M3 antagonist is the correct answer, okay? So you need to know that muscarinic antagonism anticholinergic side effects. Okay, so when we say cholinergic, that refers to muscarinic and nicotinic. On US simile, greater than 95% of the time, muscarinic and cholinergic mean the same thing, okay? So an anti-muscarinic and anti-cholinergic, that for whatever fucking reason, treats motion sickness. Now there's a drug called scopolamine. Scopolamine, that can be worn as a patch that is effective for treating motion sickness, okay? But I'll tell you an even more important point. This increases the level of the question a little bit. Diphenhydramine, okay? It's a first-generation H1, histamine 1 receptor blocker. First-generation H1 blockers, diphenhydramine, chlorphenamine, have nasty anticholinergic side effects, which when we want to treat motion sickness is actually a good thing, okay? So I've seen question on the NBME where they say, Patients given diphenhydramine for motion sickness, and they say what receptor is responsible for helping the motion sickness, and they'll have H2 listed. Student chooses H2. It's wrong fucking answer. H2 is stomach acid. Okay, so that could be cimetidine as the agent, block H2, uh, block H2 receptors. Diphenhydramine, chlorphenamine, H1 blockers, okay? Uh, first generation with nasty anticholinergic side effects, which uh, the answer to that question is M3. 
okay? So M3 antagonism treats motion sickness. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.